Why are prices for the same items so much less from one location to another? It has to have crossed your mind several times when you're, for example, shopping at your local grocery store. If you go to one grocery, your food bill is X. But if you go to another, that same basket of groceries costs $20 more. It's a puzzler. But we'll be right back in just a moment to remove some of that puzzlement. Hi everybody, welcome to It's Your Business. My name is Alan Gwynn and I'm with the Gwynn Consultancy Group here in Bristol. We work with a variety of types of clients in business, especially clients who are interested in business issues and business opportunity. Today, we want to address an issue that tends to frost consumers from time to time and location to location. What makes the prices that you're charged often on similar or identical products differ from one store to another. Well, let's talk about five key reasons why prices can vary from one store to another, meaning that your final costs change when you shop in one store as opposed to the other store. Number one, the first and primary issue determining difference is competition. Every merchant diligently searches out items which will sell more readily to offer the most competitive opportunities for consumers to purchase products from them. In some cases, they institute loyalty clubs which offer percentage discounts. Others create protected spending groups under the cover of digital ownership or digital clubs. Or they may issue coupons. Here's an ultimate truism that I can share from years of marketing experience. If you compare two retailers located across the street from each other, you'll find different product mixes or a different product sales mix. The product mix helps a merchant determine a variety of items they want to feature and items on which they want to maximize profit. Even a difference of a few cents per item can expand a difference when you check out and it can make it even more obvious. Number two, the second issue which can create pricing differences is the scale of the sales that are handled by the retailer. Compare Amazon.com as a retailer with a local mom and pop store which sells the same item. It's just common sense that a wholesaler retailer with the size and scope of an Amazon online can command lesser pricing from wholesalers or vendors. And when the wholesale vendor shows up to sell to Amazon.com buyers, the buyer ultimately tells the vendor how much they'd be willing to pay. Matter of fact, having known a wholesaler who worked with Amazon, this is exactly the method they employed. On the first year extension of the contract, Amazon pays the wholesale sum asked by the vendor. Second year after extension, Amazon asks for a 5% reduction in the wholesale price. Next year, they ask for a 10% reduction from the original wholesale price. The next year, they tell the vendor that they're willing to pay X, and if the vendor doesn't want that, no problem, they'll find another vendor. All the while, the price to you as a consumer can increase, making the price spread between what you pay as a buyer and what they're paying for the products increase. So, when they need to reduce a price to be competitive, they have no issue with doing that. Their profit is wired in. Number three, the third issue which leads to pricing differences is the rise of digital ordering, artificial intelligence to process the order, and a reduction in cost brought about because IT can make the entire process less labor intensive. In many cases, it fully automates the process, meaning that little to no human interaction is required, and that lowers labor costs and cost to the wholesaler. When the wholesaler is able to lock the purchaser in for specific orders, the vendor may even offer better terms to their retailer. 
it makes it clearer why bigger merchants can leverage their size to keep prices lower. You, as the consumer, may want to purchase from a smaller vendor because of personal choice, and that is, of course, your choice. I know I shopped at gourmet grocery stores not because of the prices, but because I knew they were more expensive where I shopped there, but they gave custom service and what I believed were better quality product. That was a personal choice I made and one which you have the option of making. Number four, another reason for pricing differentiation is that cost savings to the retailer may be passed on to the consumer. We've all heard those pitches in advertising which say, our supplier lowered our cost and we're passing those savings on to you. Sometimes that's a fact. Sometimes not. And finally, number five, the products compared may not actually compare on an item for item basis. One of the things I always try to compare is quality and ensure that the quality of the items being compared is basically similar. As an example, go to your local grocery store and compare deals on chicken pieces from one store to another. You may find that the quality at one store is better than it is at another, so the prices may be different. When you find yourself comparing prices from one location to another, be sure that you compare apples to apples. You may find lesser quality demanding lesser price. And if that's what you're comfortable with, then take advantage of it. Well, if you have questions or comments about today's segment, feel free to email me at agwin at thegwinconsultancygroup.com or ring me at 800-335-9269. Thanks for watching today's program. And remember, when it comes to business and life, it's your business. I'm Alan Gwynn.